to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God here redeems with life. And all who touch it can be revived. And all who linger on this river shore will come back a thirsty for more of the Lord. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is here. The river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the here. Up to the mountain we love to go to find the presence of the Lord. Along the banks of the river we roam with dancing and laughter, giving praise to the sun. The river of God, the river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God, river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the Take, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You've got to take, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You've got to take, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. In the street, in the street, in the home, on the job. Declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, 
Moses' righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore, still we are the voice in the desert, crying, Charlie off. Uh, hey, welcome everybody. Welcome to our worship services today here at Argyle Church of Christ. I'd like to welcome everybody here and online. If you did not grab a communion cup, please, they're in the entryway as you're coming in on the table. Uh, grab one of those so we can commune with one another as we remember the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Before we go back into worship, we're going to read some scripture. Psalms 95, 1 through 6. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for us to be able to come together and worship you freely. There are so many out there that cannot just worship you, Lord, freely and without obligation. We praise you for being able to do that today, Father. Lord, we are thankful for the freedoms that we have within the country we live. We are thankful for the many blessings that you've given us. So as we praise you today, I hope that you find joy of the words that come out of our mouth. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark is shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Serve us free from the duty that bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine on me, 
enter into communion. We're going to sing a song that is really near and dear to my heart. And it really reminds me not only the, the idea of the sacrifice and pain Christ went through on the cross, but that he was only a snap away from being able to call angels to get him off of that sacrifice. But he willingly died on the cross for us. So as we think about this, please just thank if you can't close your eyes and think about the words that we sing and the pain and sacrifice that Christ experienced on that cross as we sing this. <laughs> they found the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They So today, I would like to read from Luke 15, 25. 
And a lot of you probably already know the story. Um, in the chapter of Luke 15, there's a couple of things that Jesus actually talked about, uh, different parables that he gave. One was about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, the prodigal son. So, excuse me one second. The reason why I'm going to try to focus more on the prodigal son is it kind of ties into a personal story of mine. We're just going to start from Luke 15, 25. It says, meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and he asked him what was going on. Your brother ha has come home, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has come back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and I've never disobeyed your orders. Yeah, you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, this son of yours, which I find that very interesting because you know in family, if someone wants to downgrade another brother and sister, they will completely disown someone saying this son, this mom. So you could tell there was some bitterness there. This son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, come home, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours is dead and is alive again. He was lost and it's found. So, as far as my story goes, uh, this actually happened this, I'm going to say probably about a month or two ago. When my mom, she actually sent me a uh, audio that she wanted me to send to my brother. It was an audio of my dad's voice. And what my dad was saying was, happy birthday to my older brother. It was his 13th uh, birthday which I was 10 at the time, which was roughly around about 26 years ago. The reason why that is so important is because hearing my father, hearing my dad on audio, getting ready and wishing my brother a happy birthday, his 13th birthday, was actually the same year that he passed away. My brother's birthday is July 3rd. My dad passed away in October. It was a hard thing to hear. Honestly, I actually was at work when I got the message. And while delivering mail, I broke down in tears. And it was a couple of reasons why. One reason was because I didn't receive a message. That message was not given to me. It wasn't for me. It was strictly for my older brother. Many of you know my birthday is in March. So I didn't receive the same thing he got. So I was bitter. Why couldn't I get that same message? Why couldn't I hear his voice directed towards me? But then I forgot. My options that I had was either to be jealous of my brother for getting something 
that I would have loved to have. Or remember my dad's love and provision for his whole family. So what Jesus did on the cross not only took care of our internal life, but it also came with a blessing. It was provision of what we get here on earth. There's a part in the passage that we actually, that I just read, that really stuck out to me. And it's the reason why I shared this story with you was that it says, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. How many times do we forget that? It's easy to forget your provisions when you get distracted by someone else's blessing. So what we remember weekly here at Our God Church of Christ is the love of Christ through his sacrifice. So before we take communion and before we pray, never forget that the Father loves you because what he has is yours. Let us pray. Dear Holy Father, we thank you so much for all that you have given. And at this moment, Lord, we remember your son's sacrifice. Remember what your sac his sacrifice has done for us here on earth, what it means for us in eternity and how much love it took to give so much of oneself. The blood that was shed, the body that was broken, for all of humanity's transgressions. What a tough cross to bear. But we are here today, Lord, at this moment, every week to remember that sacrifice and how important it is for us. How much you have provided for us, how much you are still giving us everything to this day. So we're forever grateful for all that we receive. We are forever thankful that we have you, Lord. So Lord, as we continue uh, this service, Lord, let us keep your son in the forethought of our minds, remembering that sacrifice. And although we may not get all the accolades, all the, the different pats on the back from mankind, things that we might desire, Lord, let us always remember that everything that you provide us is because that you love us. Everything we have is yours. And we're thankful to be with you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. I uh, have a few announcements for you, and also welcome to any of the visitors are here. And please remember, we have some cards, guest cards on our table out here. So if you're visiting, we would love to have your information. And also, your prayer needs, please remember to send those to me so we can get them out to our body and our brothers and sisters here to pray for one another. Um, we have Easter invitations. Brad has been 
heavy at work with all our graphic designing, and so we want to be able to invite guests for Easter. So as you leave, please remember to pick up. There's a little postcard looking things that have the Easter service information. Take one or two of them home with you and, and invite your neighbor or your friends or your relatives and somebody who can come share Easter with us. There will be an Easter egg hunt for the kids directly after services. Um, so that's a good thing to invite some of your friends that have kids and come and be with us. Um, also, there's a we're, we're starting to work on VBS, Jen is, um, the organization of that. So there's a table set out in the foyer. If you would like to volunteer and help out, please pray about that. And, and remember, service to our kids and service to our community is important. So Jen needs some help. And so if you will, right after services today, meet Jen right out here at the table. Um, and she'll be meeting with the volunteers or anyone who's interested. Um, even if you may be interested and you're, you're thinking about it, please drop by the table and talk to Jen. Um, we also have uh, the ladies retreat coming up and I can't, can you believe it's been a year since we've been announcing this ladies retreat? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm really ready to have this ladies retreat. Um, and I'm really hoping you ladies are ready for the ladies retreat. So this week, again, is our last week. We have to pay all our money over to the hotel um, and reserve the room. So please contact me or there's a sign up sheet out at the foyer table. And please do that this week if you're thinking about it. We, um, we have a great lineup and we still have our guest speaker coming over, flying in from Louisiana to speak to us. So to, please, we want to be uplifted together. Um, lastly, um, some of you may have seen that although I have enjoyed serving you guys, I think it's time for me to really retire a little more. Um, so we will be looking for a part-time um, secretary reception type person in our office. So if you have those organization people skills, and please look in the bulletin. I have kind of a list of things that we're looking for, and you can send that resume over to me, and there, there will be a, a committee that will review the resumes and get back with you. So please, if that's something you need to pray about and think about, and, and we would love to have uh, a good servant, and that's a good serving position um, that we really need somebody for. So please do that and pray about it. Um, we are going to dismiss our lady, uh, I'm sorry, our kids now. We're not going to dismiss the ladies yet, y'all. We're going to dismiss the kids for worship. But I also have lost and found. Have you ever gotten odd things for lost and found? Uh, we get really odd things in the office. Uh, I'm getting quite a collection of reading glasses. I had a pink pair for several months. I had a nice jacket. I had Now I have black reading glasses that I have sitting on the table down in the foyer. And then this morning, someone with a beautiful Yeti cup had a little spill with ice out here. So now I have a Yeti cup clip that was laying out here by the door. So if you're missing your little... Uh, clip thing for your Yeti cup. Please see me. So have a great service and remember to greet someone with a smile. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run. The fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow.
song before the sermon. This is a season for a new anointing. This is a season for fresh outpouring. That the sons and daughters of the King of glory may rise and shine. That the sons and daughters of the King of glory may rise and shine. As we declare, this is the day
Good morning. good morning. It is good to see you guys this morning. And uh, just a couple things before we get started that I'm just excited to share. One is that we already mentioned that these Easter cards, so this is what it looks like when you leave here. Make sure you pick up one of these cards because Easter is a time of year where more people are receptive to coming to church and hearing about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. So I will be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for you, that you would take one of these cards and that you would invite one person, that you would invite someone to come here an Easter message, an Easter message on April 4th. So make sure you pick up a card. Um, the other thing that I'm excited to share with you about is I want to plant a seed in your mind for an opportunity. Um, we feel that it is time that there is a need for people to be with one another. And so we're looking for some people who may be willing to host some small gatherings some small gatherings and there will be no prep there there's no requirement to prepare for anything but it is a way it's a technique to study God's Word that is a powerful way to study God's Word together in a small setting so we will work out those logistics we'll be showing you what this looks like here in weeks to come but if there's anybody who's willing to be a host then come see me or, or talk to the office, send us an email, but we're looking forward to that. All right, for this morning, our creation showcase, I have two creatures for you. The first one we're going to talk about is the grasshopper mouse, which Michael Clark sent to me. If you don't know what the, the grasshopper mouse is, maybe you've heard it by its other name, because its other name is the werewolf mouse. Okay, now why is this mouse called the werewolf mouse? Well, this mouse, it is immune to venom. It hunts and eats scorpions and centipedes. And on top of that, it howls at the moon. <laughs> Can you imagine this little tiny little mouse howling at the moon? Amazing uh, creation. So here over the right, let's go ahead and play that video. Um, this is the dead leaf butterfly. Would you look at that? Now, I've seen a stick bug before. The first time I ever saw a stick bug, I was a, a kid, and I saw it, and I was genuinely fooled, and I thought it was a stick, and then I saw it walk, and just kind of a mind-blowing. I've never seen one of these in real life, but can you imagine? Look at the detail of this insect, this butterfly, beautiful colors on the inside. When it closes up, it is a perfect replica of a dead leaf. Now let me ask you something. Do you think that that's the product of random chance or do you think that that is intelligently designed by a creator God? Say it out loud. Let me hear you this morning. Come on. Look at what God has created. It's not hard. He is present. He is amazing. We know him through his creation that he has made. So we share that. I always love that opportunity to show off on, uh, with, uh, about God with you on Sundays on these creation showcases. But this week I've had a song in my heart. I really have I've had this song. It's called The Goodness of God. And in this song, the message is, is so powerful and it relates to me. And so what I did is I asked my niece, this is my niece, Ellie, I asked her to read some of the lyrics today. So let's go ahead and listen to some of the lyrics of Goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days I have been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in, your good, in the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrounded now. I give you everything. Because your goodness is running after it keeps running after me. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Um, yeah, I will sing of the goodness of God. 
I will sing of the goodness of God. These lyrics, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And I mean that. Those lyrics are true of me. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. And so with every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Now, you may be sitting there and you may perceive me and assess my love based on this or that, but I want to remind you that my love for God is not about my experience, it's not about the things in my life, but it's about the discovery. It's about the discovery that I made in surrendering everything to Him. And the discovery is that when we are able to literally I don't mean literally. (laughs) When we are able to, in our minds, give completely everything to God, the discovery is that he is enough. That if it's all taken away, he is enough. And that is so powerful. And I thought of a way to kind of express this this morning. And have you ever had that moment in life where you either lost your keys or your wallet, okay, or your phone? Do you know that? Do you know that feeling? Okay, it's like, oh, wait a minute, where are my keys? And all of a sudden you're looking around the house or you're looking for your wallet and and you're just looking everywhere and there's just this frustration, a little panic that sets in. Okay, you know the feeling? It's almost as if a part of you is missing. As silly as that sound, how can keys be a part of you? How could your phone be a part of you or a wallet? But there's this panic, there's this, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I'm lost. Well, this discovery that he is enough is almost like the opposite of that. That I am complete as is. That nothing can be taken away from me. That nothing can be robbed me from this completeness that I already have with me and the creator. It's the opposite of that feeling. So again, this morning, I love the Lord and I want to be careful to love the Lord. You know, we've got these stones still on the stage, still reminding me of our study in Joshua, still as a, serving as a physical reminder that we can be courageous no matter where we are, not because of you, not because of what you're good at, not because of anything to do with you really, but because of God that is with you. And we found out from that study that we have to be careful to love the Lord, not careful with, with how we are ready for the battle in front of us. No, careful to love the Lord because it's his battle to fight. His battle to fight is in your life. It is today just as much as it was with the enemies that Joshua encountered. The battle is the Lord's. So we are careful to love the Lord. So in this study, we've been looking at both Mark chapter 12 and Deuteronomy 6. In Deuteronomy 6, we see the Shema, this prayer that in the Jewish tradition that they recite in the morning and at night to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And in Mark chapter 12, we see Jesus' response to a, a direct question of all the commandments, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus says in Mark 12 and 30, to love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And as you look and you see the the, the difference in these two passages, it's talking about the same thing, but you can see there's a difference. Okay, in Deuteronomy, it doesn't say anything about the mind. So so what's going on here? We're going to kind of get into a little bit of why there's a difference here between Deuteronomy chapter 6 and Mark chapter 12. But part of the reason of the difference is there there are, sometimes things are hard to translate when it comes to language. We're we're reading in in the original language of of Hebrew in in Deuteronomy. In Mark chapter 12, the original language is Greek. And so there's some things that change meaning through language. Sometimes cultural has impact. You guys have experienced things that have been lost in translation before. I have a few signs when translation goes wrong. Some things are, 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 are missed in translation. So I'll show you a few signs. Some of the reading is going to be hard to read, but I'll read for you. Uh, this first one, chicken of your mother. I don't know what the original language is. I don't, I don't know exactly what it's trying to be 
communicated here, but I, I think maybe something's not quite right here. Chicken of your mother. The next one is very small here, but there's some meat at a market. One of them says um, boneless lamp, and the other one is lamp meat. So here again, there's probably something that's been missed. Here, this next one. Anyone obeying the swimming pool regulations may be required to leave. I doubt that's exactly the way they wanted to communicate that. How about this one? Syrian paralysis cheese. Like I, I have no idea. Here's one in a religious uh, setting. Toilet, the place of prayer. Now some of you may think that is spot on. And there's this last one. Eating carpet strictly prohibited. See, in all of these instances, there's something that was kind of off in the translation, and you read it one way, it's meant uh, to, to be heard and understood in a different way, but there's something that's lost in, tr in translation. And so part of this study is us trying to determine what it is. We're trying to be careful to love the Lord. So what does it mean to love the Lord with all your heart? What does it mean? What does it mean to love the Lord with all your soul or all your mind? And so we've been going each week looking at each word and trying to understand how we can love the Lord in these ways. So the first one was to love the Lord your God with all of your heart. With all of your heart. And so I've brought a, a visual for us this morning. You may have noticed um, today. So love the Lord your God with all of your your heart. These are not to scale. <laughs> but what is your heart? That inner part of you. There's what you say and what you do, and there's what you think and how you feel. You can say and do many, many things. Is your heart in it? You can say you love the Lord. You can come to church on a Sunday morning and you can sit and you can make noise from your mouth and praise to God. Is your heart in it? And so when we look at this word to love the Lord with all of your heart, we're asking ourselves this question, do, the, do our, what we say and what we do, does it mirror how we think and how we feel? Now you notice in the difference between Deuteronomy and, and um uh, Mark chapter 12, that mind is not mentioned in Deuteronomy. And the reason for that is because the heart in Hebrew carries the meaning of the mind as well. That's why we don't see that in Deuteronomy. Throughout the Old Testament, we have confirmation of this. We see that we are to, we, the, the heart knows, the heart understands, there's wisdom in the heart, there's discernment in the heart. When we love the Lord with all of our heart, it is this inward authenticity. That's the way that I like to think of it. There's this inward authenticity that I don't just say I love God. It's not just a part of my religion. It's not just a part of my life. It is core. It is core of who I am. I love you, Lord. I don't just say it love the Lord with all my heart. So we love the Lord with all of our heart. Then we, we talked about the soul. What is this? And why are you putting it there? <laughs> love the Lord with all of your soul. We recognize that we're both, we're both dust and the breath of the living God. We're both physical beings and spiritual beings. We are on a soul's journey in a physical world. We get that. We understand that. And so we're recognizing that to love the Lord with all your soul is not to live your life completely focused on the physical all the time, but for us to be seeking a spiritual existence. It is real. You don't get your soul when your body dies. You have a soul. Are you paying attention to it? You are a soul. Are you seeking those times of prayer? Are you seeking those times in meditation? Are you taking your shoes off and putting your bare feet on the ground? And connecting with your creator? Are you seeking a spiritual existence? Well, in Hebrew, the word soul, nefesh, actually also means throat. 
Why would it mean throat? Think about it. The throat is really the gate of life. It's how we take in air. It's how we take in food and water. For the, for the Hebrew thinking individual, your throat was the, this passage of life. To love the Lord your God with all of your living being. All of your physical being. And so there's a slight difference here in understanding that we're spiritual beings in a physical world and loving the Lord with everything in your life. So we love the Lord with all of our soul, seeking a spiritual existence. Then we talked about loving the Lord with all of your mind. That's a big brain. Love the Lord with all your mind. And we, we talked about the action of what God calls for us, that God wants us to experience a renewal of the mind. Are we going to be conformed? Are we going to be transformed? Is this going to be something that is an external process on the way that we think, or is there going to be an internal change in our mind, not to think like the world, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but to choose our reasonable service. Our reasonable service is to choose to be a living sacrifice. And so to love the Lord with all your mind is this acknowledgement that we have this opportunity to transform the way that we think to be a living sacrifice. Are you living for self or are you a living sacrifice? This is what takes place in the mind. It's no longer about me. It's no longer about fulfilling anything personally because that ultimately doesn't fulfill choosing to be a living sacrifice. Okay, so here we are today. We're on our next word. Love the Lord your God with all of your strength. Now, this is a really great word for us to focus on this morning because especially for a group of people who are so inclined to compartmentalization, right? We want to know what is loving the Lord with all your soul and all your heart and all your mind. And so this is a really good one. Well, where's the strength? Do I need to get a logo and put it on the bicep? What do you guys think? Love the Lord with all your strength. Maybe, I don't know. Where do we put this logo? Love the Lord your God with all of your strength. Do you know how many times in my life, and I'm not joking, this is a serious comment, do you know how many times in my life I've stood between two pillars trying to summon my inner Samson strength? I'm just sitting there between pillars. I wonder, can I do it? Sitting there and then, and then kind of fearing, oh no, what if this works? <laughs> What's going to happen if this works? Do you know how many times I've done that in my life? Yes, even as an adult, okay? How many times I've done that? To love the Lord with all your strength. Is this our physical capability? To love the Lord with all of your strength. Is that all of our physical capability? Or is there something that is more to, to this? When we talk about strength, we know it in our language, in our culture. We see strength kind of in two ways. One, in the physical capability, but also in our mental endurance. That you're strong. Now, a great way to put the, these two together is someone who runs a marathon, right? Because in order to run a marathon, you both have to have the physical strength to run a marathon, but you also need the mental strength of endurance to run a marathon, okay? So we see that it's not just about physical ability. And in Deuteronomy, this word that we're going to encounter in Deuteronomy chapter 6, there's actually a great lesson for us about what this strength is. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, to love the Lord with all of your might, we get this from the word me'od, which is translated as might. It means literally very much or exceedingly. But the thing about this word is that it is an enhance, it's an enhancer. It's used as an adjective, as an adverb. It enhances another word. It is very this or it is exceedingly this. It's not a thing thing that we describe it is more a way of a thing does that make sense strength is not something to describe but rather a way of things mayod very 
much, exceedingly. Let me give you some examples in scriptures. When we look at Genesis chapter 1, we see this account where God creates and we see the light is good and the land and we see this pattern, it is good, it is good, and God continues to create. And then we get to the day 6 and it is mayo good, it is very good. There's this distinction between the first five days and the sixth day of creation and it is mayo good, it is very good. It enhances good. You with me? Then we go to Genesis chapter 4 and 5 and we read about Cain and Abel. And it says in verse 5, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was maod, angry, and his face fell. So in Genesis chapter 1, God's creation is maod, good. Here, in this, it enhances something completely different. Here, in this case, Cain is maod, angry. He is very angry. We see in 1 Samuel eleven fifteen, 15, King Saul, Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced, mayod, or your translation may say very happy. Very angry, very happy. In um, uh, Numbers 14, 7, we, we see mayod twice, exceedingly good. Mayod, mayod. And the reason that I want us to understand and see the use of this word is to understand that to love the Lord with all of your strength it is not limited to our physical capability. Strength is a way of you, not a part of you. Strength is not limited to our physical capabilities, but they can be applied to any act, just like you can be mayoed angry or mayoed happy. You can be very angry. You can be very happy. You can be very good. Strength is a way of you. Now, some of you may be thinking, what are you talking about, Brad? I hope, I hope you're not, <laughs> but maybe you're there and you're, what are you talking about, Brad? Think of it this way. The dueling philosophies in education between teachers and students, teachers desire to instill a way in a student. They want to bring out the best. They want to instill a way of you. And I can't tell you how many times I heard as a student this phrase from teachers, do your best, right? That's what they want to instill. They want to, you to do your best, to do your very, to do your much, to do your mayod, to do it with all your strength. What is your capability? That's what I want to pull out of you. That's what a teacher, a good teacher, is trying to instill in a student. Do your best, do your mayod, do your very, do your much. But let me ask you this, how many of you as a student ever really fully gave your best? Did you ever? Because that may be what a teacher wants to say to a student, but do you know what a student wants to say to the teacher? What do I need to do to get the grade? Right? That's what's on the heart of the student. What do I have to do? What do I need to do to get the grade? I mean, is this my best? No way. This homework assignment, is that my best? Absolutely not. But will it get the grade? You see, there's a difference in the philosophy of approaching learning and education. Why would I give more effort when I already have the grade? Because in this instance, it is a goal-based effort. It is goal-based effort. Good teachers are trying to instill mayo, but often students just want to make the grade. To love the Lord with all of your strength is the amplifier of your heart, of your soul, of your mind. It is the amplifier with all of your strength, with all of your very, with all of your much. Love the Lord with all of your strength. Now, do you relate... I don't know if you can relate to this, but to the challenge of capturing the attention of a large group of children. Anybody? I don't know if you can relate to that, but I will tell you that my, one of my first jobs was a summer daycare where I was in charge of some elementary boys. That was good to do for one summer. That was enough. That was a challenge. But I will tell you that during that experience, I learned the power of a megaphone. I learned the, the power to amplify a voice, to amplify a message. Now, I might need to get a megaphone in here sometimes. 
and shout out, you know, will you stop goofing off? There's a sermon going on. Or may, can you just wait? Are you really going to do that, make, have that conversation in service? Or don't you think you should be writing that down right now to amplify a message? Okay, that's what our strength is, to amplify a message. And so let me merge a few visuals. If you're, if you're tracking with me this morning, let me merge a couple visuals. Are you amplifying your love for God with all of your strength, or do you just want to make the grade? This is a metaphor. <laughs> There's no grades given by God that I'm aware of. Do you love the Lord with all your strength? With all your very? With all your much? Loving the Lord with all your strength is not goal-based like your math homework. It has to be based on love. You see, when we talk about Loving the Lord with all of our strength, it's not a part of you, but it is a way of you. And it cannot be goal-based. It has to be love-based, love-based strength. And so this is really, I'm going to step out of scene here for a minute. This is loving the Lord with all of your strength. It is a way of you, not a part of you. And it is not goal-based, but it is love-based. It is love-based. That's the type of motivation that gives us that strength, that gives us that, that fuel. Kind of like this. When you started writing poetry to that special someone and you said to yourself, hey, I don't write poetry. All of a sudden, there's this motivation that pushes you even past your capabilities because it's based on love. To do something with all your strength, with all of your effort, with all your much, with all of your very will be very different when it's based on love than when it's based on a goal. Just like your math homework. To love the Lord with all your strength has to be based on love. Church, where is our love-based strength? The effort, the strength, is empowered by love. And so I wanted to read a section of scripture that is very powerful, very applicable to this fuel for our strength, which is love of God. So we're going to go to 1 John 4, and we're going to read these a couple verses at a time, a passage that we've probably read and you've probably read many times, but there's just so much power in these verses that we, that we need to see and hear this morning. In 1 John 4, 7 and 8, it says, 7 and 8, it says Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And if you're going to read 1 John 4, I recommend that you read it really slow because there's so much in 1 John 4. But in these two verses, listen to what we've, we've been taught by God's word. One, it says, love one another. Love one another, and there's a reason for love is from God. And it says that whoever loves has both been born of God and knows God, and whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. We go on to the next couple of verses in, in verses 9 and 10. It says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, the offering of our sins, the sacrifice for our sins. Here, love is revealed that Jesus was sent. And there, again, there's this contrast. Not that you love God, but that God loved you because he showed you. He showed you what love is when he sent his son Amen. to be put in your place. He showed you what love is. The action of love, this sacrifice that we've been talking about in our minds to be a living sacrifice. Then we move on to verse 11 and 12. Beloved, if God so loved us, 
we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. We should love others because we have been loved by God. And by loving others, we actually reveal the love of God. It says no one has ever seen God. But if we love others, God abides in us and his love is made perfect in us. To love the Lord with all your strength is not a part of you. It is a way of you. It is not goal-based, but it needs to be love-based. Do you know the love that God has for you? Do you need a reminder of that? God loves you so much. He showed you. He showed you, not by saying, hey, I love you, but he showed you he loved you by sending his son as an offering for you. To know and abide in the creator's love. Now that is fuel for our strength. That is love-based strength. Now, some of you might be happy that within the definition of ma'od, there is this noun form to help in the meaning of ma'od, and it is this, it is muchness. You ever heard that word before? (laughs) Love the Lord with all your muchness. So this is our muchness right here, that, that there's a way of you that has to be rooted in, has to be the fuel for the, for the love that we give. To love the Lord with all of your strength, with all of your effort, with all. Is that what we're doing in life? To love the Lord with all of your strength, with all of your might, with all of your muchness. Can you imagine what the body of Christ is capable of when we are motivated by love? All your strength. All your strength. What if what you did for God, it was as if there was this megaphone. It was as if there was this amplifier to what you could do. And it's not based on you trying to achieve any goal. But it's based on this pure, powerful understanding of how much you are loved by your creator. How much he adores you. How much he desires to be with you and then that love which we'll see and make sure you come back next week because next week we'll see the, the words that Jesus then adds to this love and loving your neighbor love the Lord with all of your strength so we've had some homework if, you, if you've been here this past several weeks, we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6, there's practice that's also given to these command to love the Lord. And so we talked about um, the first week, talk of them when you sit and when you walk by the way. Then the next week we talked about when, when you talk about them when you rise and when you go to bed and you wrote prayers. And then last week we, we had the reminder, another physical reminder, these, these bracelets that are on the stage to, to in our mind as a reminder, bind them on you. And so this week we had reminders of living for self or living sacrifice in our thinking. Well, this week we have some homework as well. The next phrase there in Deuteronomy 6 is to write them on your doorpost and gates. And so what I'm asking you, your homework today, should you choose it, your mission, if you should choose so this morning, is to write them on your door. Now, you don't have to write on your door. You can take a piece of paper. It can be a permanent thing, yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, you can, or it can be for a week. But take a paper. Maybe you can get some of your artistic expression out. And I want you to either write on this sign, either Mark, chap- Mark chapter 12, verse 30, or Deuteronomy 6, verse 5, of how we are to love the Lord. And I want you to write that on a, as a sign, and I want you to put it on your door. And then I'd love for you to take a picture and send that to me. Or even better, I'd love for you to post that on our social media account, on our Facebook or Instagram, to post your pictures of these signs that you're posting on your doors. Love the Lord with all of your strength. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you.
Let that fuel, let that fuel the way that you then love this world. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for today and we're grateful that we can come and be with our brothers and sisters and worship and praise you. God, I pray that today what will be on our hearts and our minds as we leave here today is that we have a desire to love you with all of our strength, God. Not just our, our physical capability, but with everything that we do, Lord, to give you our all, to give you our best, to give you our effort because of your love. Lord, thank you so much for showing us the way that you love us. Lord, I pray that we will then know that love and that will be the fuel to love you with all of our strength. We pray this in your son's name, amen. If you'd like to respond to the word today, we're gonna to give you an opportunity. We're gonna stand and we're gonna sing. You can come forward, we'll, we'll pray for you here today. Um, or if you'd like to connect with someone as we leave here today, uh, you have that opportunity as well. But let's go ahead and stand and sing. Thank you for everybody who joined us in worship, both here and online. 
Uh, we are sure gra grateful to have you, and we would appreciate if you're visiting with us to stay behind for Bible class uh, and that we can visit with one another. So this will be our song before we uh, leave for worship. Mm -hmm. I know I know Thank you for joining us today. We've had a wonderful time in fellowship and worship and study and hopefully your online, the online experience has been encouraging to you as well today. To give God our complete love is what the Word of God says is the most important task in your life. It's the most important task in your life to give that complete love to God, to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And we love God because He first loved us and, and showed us His love. Are you willing to show your love to God this week? Again, we thank you so much for joining us today. And I want to take this time to just request that you consider partnering in ministry with us here at Argyle. Here at Argyle, the need is great and so is the passion to do the work of God. So I want you to understand that any financial contribution that you make to Argyle will be received with so much gratitude. So you can give online, or you can give on our app, or you can send in checks directly to us. But we thank you so much for that consideration. Remember, to love people, follow Jesus, serve the community, and to praise God. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.